Good morning, good afternoon, good night, whatever time of the, uh, whatever time of the day it is in the world where you are. This is the way our new podcast. Well, I can't. I just realized I can't say this is this is the way oh, when I introduce our podcast. That's so redundant. <laughs> I have to come up with a different way to introduce it. Um, But anyway, this is the way. uh, That's the full name of our podcast. Um, Your one-stop shop for uh, geek culture, for nerd culture, for fitness culture. Um, You know, the way. Mm -hmm. That's why. That's why we named it that. Uh, Yeah. No, that's... um, This is episode one, and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to talk about some lifestyle things, what we got going on in our uh, own personal lives. Yep. We're going to talk about a little bit of like specialized things like nutrition. We're not certified nutritionists. However. Yet. Yet. Yeah. Plan on getting it. Yes. (laughs) However, he is currently a certified NASA personal trainer. Mm -hmm. Mine expired two years ago. But you still have knowledge. I do. And it's not like something that like, it was like I did it and then I never went back to it. Like I got my cert. Yeah. I trained people. I realized I was, I didn't like it. I was kind of bad at the, the salesman part. But um, but I still, I use all of it. I think that's the most important part. I right. use it. Well, you, you, you found a passion and you, exactly. you, kept, you kept going with it. So. Exactly. That's the most important part. Um. Yeah, but so we're just we're just starting a podcast because we're bored mainly. Uh, yeah. This is what we're two months into this quarantine thing now, and now mm. we're kind of going a little little crazy. I think um, yeah. just need just something to do. So why not a mm. podcast? I have mics, I have cameras, I have lights. Yeah, and they recently just extended our stay home work safe order until yeah. June fifteenth, yeah. and uh, my semester at school ends next week. My finals are next week, so I'm gonna have. Well, it's not that much time. It's two weeks, and I'm taking my summer classes. Yeah. But yeah. But yeah. But yeah, so we're talking about education and stuff. So who we are individually. Uh-huh. So my name is Quila. Let's see Swiss. how you guess how you spell that, maybe. <laughs> like, leave in the comments. How do you think? Yeah. Well, how do you spell Quila? No. It's Q-U-I-L-A. I'm Quila. I won't tell you what my real name is. The full. It's a shortened version of that. But um, anyway. Um, 28... We live in Austin, Texas. I'm personally from San Antonio, Texas. Um, I've been working out for since like 2016. Um, I'm currently, I work as like a, a glorified accounts payable clerk. It's a little level above that. And I have a psych degree and I'm currently going back to school to become a CPA, a certified personal accountant. So that's fun. Uh, I literally just want to get more money. Uh, <laughs> Don't mind me. Yeah. I, uh, I'm i Jimmy. I'm 26, not from Texas. I'm from uh, Virginia. I have a lot of family from Texas, though, which is what brought me here. And the the production side mm-hmm. of things down here, I definitely came, came here for the production. Um, I'm currently editing, uh, editing video and stuff like that full time. And... Uh, yeah, that's about it for me. I've got, I've got my personal trainer certification as well, and um, hoping to get that started back up once quarantine ends and gyms mm-hmm. open back up. Um, so well, yeah, that's a that's a funny story about my my timing of my yeah. my certification. Yeah, into the <laughs> wah, wah, wah. <laughs> yeah yeah I um, yeah. I've been working on my cert for months before the quarantine happened, and then. Finally passed my test. I failed it the first time by like three points. Went back, passed it the next time, and then a few days after that, the quarantine started. And then, like you were, you were getting like the interview for the job, like you were mm-hmm. shooing for. Yeah, basically, a job. basically had a job at Gold's yeah. for a trainer, and then they obviously closed down. So yeah, it's very unfortunate timing, but we understand. Like we could, we could be in worse situations oh, absolutely. for sure. Absolutely. Um, my goes out to all the people who are literally like without homes, mm-hmm. um, which I hope isn't happening actually. Cause I know that they, they're doing like that rent assistance thing. In, well, there's no assistance. It's or, leniency. Um, yeah. Leniency. So in Texas, they did a thing where, uh, three months, I think it's two months. two months. You have two months before they can, they mm-hmm. like, they will give you late fees and stuff like that, but they're not going to mm-hmm. evict you. Yeah. It depends. It, I guess it's a, a pace by pace pace by pace yeah. base by base cases yeah. with uh apartments and stuff like that but uh i know 
ours like threatened to give late late fees and stuff like that. They just weren't mm-hmm. gonna evict us if, yeah. if we didn't pay it on time. I'd say like no matter what situation you're in, um, if you can give, make sure you do. Um, to there's so many different uh, organizations that you can give to now. Uh, Feeding America is one. Um, giving to the CDC, the World Health Organization, uh, just anywhere that you can find something to do do it i know obviously we can't really physically touch people or help Mm -hmm. out in that kind of way but this is the one way where it's okay to be lazy just go ahead and log into a website and give some money to these companies or these um, organizations because people another another really good thing to do if you're wanting to help out on like a local scale is just like find like a local restaurant that you really like and buy a bunch of their gift cards if you know you're going to go there like later in the year it's a way to support them right now they get money in their pockets right now um so I didn't even think about a, that. That's a, that's a really good way to do it. I heard that, I forget where, I think it was on YouTube or something like that. I saw somebody say that, and I was like, oh, that's a that brilliant really idea. idea. Yeah. And then what I've been telling Jimmy is that, like, so you know how if I go to a restaurant, I'm tipping, mm-hmm. like, I mean, usually I'm a really good tipper, uh, like, outside of all this weird stuff. Like, I'll tip usually about 15, 20%. Mm-hmm. But, like, now I'm tipping, like, 50%, just because you got to compensate for what people haven't had. Like yeah. we're just in a different time. If, if I can't do it, if I can't tip somebody that I'm not going to go out to eat, I'm just, I'm going to go to HEB. I'm going to go to the grocery store. Um, H-E-B. <laughs> <laughs> well, H-E-B. Everybody outside of Texas is like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go to Howard E. But, um, <laughs> I'm gonna go to the grocery store instead of um, wasting um, wasting people's time making me food and not getting any money from it. But yeah, do what you can, all the ways you can. Buy local. Yep. Definitely, we need to go to the farmers market. I didn't even think about that. See, I didn't want to go to the farmers market because I didn't want to perpetuate the issue. I didn't mm-hmm. want to be a part of the big crowd. And I'm still a little like torn on it myself because like mm-hmm. I do want to go to the farmers market and get those things and support those businesses. Exactly, that is, like one of the big things that I want to do. Like, there's a couple of businesses at this farmers market that we go to that we really like. We really like the people who run them oh, and stuff like that. Okay, so we should definitely give them props. I mean. This is our first video, so who knows if anyone's watching, but <laughs> if you could touch somebody. So Wonderlusk. Yep. Um, Man, I feel like, is that is that the way you say it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wonderlusk. Definitely going to look it up right now. If you could imagine that word, but German, that's how you spell it. <laughs> 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 it has the, the umlauts over the, the U and everything. Umlau? I think it's umlau. Not, I don't think it's plural. But what we'll do is we'll put in, the, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, we're going to distribute this across many different channels, um, not like YouTube channels, but different media. Um, and we'll put a description on our YouTube um, about some of the local businesses that we love and that we go to. Yeah. Um, we're not Austinites, but we definitely explore a lot of Austin, so we know a lot of places. And we made friends, like you said, we made friendships with some people um, at the, the farmer's market. So Yeah, it's, it's super cool to like go to the farmer's market and, you know, mm-hmm. have, I mean, it's... A little embarrassing for me that it's the cookie guys that know me so well, but <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. They're super nice. Yeah, so. they really are. They really are. I hope they're doing okay. We haven't yeah. talked to them in a couple I'd, months. I know they were having a hard time when this first started because South by Southwest was one of the first things to get canceled, and they put out a, a social media thing saying like, "We uh, we need your help right now. If you can buy any cookies at all, they mm-hmm. made like." 20,000 so cookies for, for South by Southwest, yeah. only for it to get canceled and them just have to sit on all these cookies. Mm-hmm. Which Mother's is Day, awful. man. Oh, that's tomorrow. Did you buy your mom something? Yeah. You did? Did yeah. you buy your grandma something? Yeah. Good. Good boy. <laughs> I'm proud of you. Okay. Uh, yeah, but we're stuck. We're stuck in this together. We're all in this. Can I sing that? Is that copyright? Mm-hmm. <laughs> We can do the dance and people will know what it is. I don't know how to dance. Renegade. Renegade. <laughs> Renegade. What do the kids do? Renegade. <laughs> but yeah, we're we're stuck in this together. Um, For the audio listeners, we just danced really awful. <laughs> I mean, in my defense, I'm approaching 30. Hey. I do not know what the fuck these kids are doing nowadays it's like, not any it's not anything everything that you do every dance you do has to be in like a one by one square you can't move <laughs> or leave that area i am still to this day 
doing the Dougie. Like, yeah. the Dougie will not die. Like, you know how <laughs> our parents were doing, like, what the, like, the running man? Or, like, running the man running man is dead in the actual running man, not that fake running man shit that these new kids came up with. What are you talking about? No, okay, the, the, the running man. Okay, There's so. There's a new running man? Yeah, okay, so. God, I'm out of it. Okay, I'm out of it. So, the <laughs> actual running man is, like, Will Smith. Right. Oh, I don't know what the new running man is, actually. But you, you a, talking about you talking about jerk, like the reject, because that's the running man backwards. <laughs> I did something like that. I don't know. See, see, we're sorry to touch on him, but there yeah, was we a, shouldn't be talking about this. We're, yeah. we're dating ourselves right now. <laughs> anyway, what was I talking about? <laughs> yeah. Um. So we're talking about renegade. We're talking about um soldier boy but anyway <laughs> who's been, who has talked about soldier boy at all <laughs> in the last five years oh gosh he's he's goat Ooh, no, I, that'd be a fun that'd be one of be a fun video is like take like going on like okay maybe not i was gonna say going on like a like a high school campus and like asking kids questions but i shouldn't go on a high school campus i think at all no it's a weird it's a weird thing to do i guess no uh, maybe maybe if you shaved your beard you could fit in no so you want to look that's like a pedophile. Still, that's, that's even more weird. Then I'm trying to, like, assimilate. Oh, oh yeah, that's true. That's even weirder. <laughs> I could. Um, I but anyway, like a I think, like, asking, like, kids these days, like, do you know who Soulja Boy is? Like, stuff like that. Like, kind yeah. of, like, like super popular artists for our uh-huh. time. But, like, who? Yeah. <laughs> It'd be like... You know somebody who has really just, like, stayed with it over the decades? Hmm. Lil Wayne. Yeah. Like, he was, like, um, Young Money, Cash Money. Before Young Money, it was just Cash Money, like, him and Juvenile and um, Silk the Shocker, people like that. Um, no, not Silk the Shocker. He was a Master P. But anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Yes. Um, like, they, they blew up then. That was way before my time. When we were in high school, he was huge. And he's still huge. He's still relevant. So big ups to people who can, like, stay relevant throughout the decades. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Anyway. I'd um, definitely say he's on the, like, on the back end of relevant these days. Lil Wayne. Yeah. I mean, he his opened, new album He opened was for fire. Blink-182. Like, uh, <laughs> that's, yeah. a, that's, a, that's a back end of the relevancy uh, arc, I his think. His new album, though, was great it was really good i liked it Funeral. yeah mm-hmm. I, I did like it. i didn't i didn't know um that he had tried to commit suicide really? like i um and that wasn't on the newest album i think that was on the album prior where they had yeah. his um his mom like i don't know if he was playing with the gun or um if he was just uh playing around or if it was an accident yeah. and then i listened to the lyrics in that song that one song and i was like Oh, like I didn't know. I thought he was literally just like a like a fifteen year old kid, just like literally playing around with like a gun that he found, and he accidentally shot himself, hmm. which I thought was really weird. Like, how can you shoot yourself? But, Happens um, all the time, I guess. Yeah, but. I, I'm glad he's still here with us because uh, that would have been a big loss to the the hip hop society. I mean, I don't want to be that guy, but would it if you died at fifteen? <laughs> Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> you wouldn't even know well, what, no. you had, what you had. Yeah, but I mean, he was such a big influence on people that com- came out now. Like, if he hadn't had yeah, existed, true, true. we wouldn't have had the trends that we had now. I think I think without Lil Wayne and stuff like that, Lean wouldn't have been made it as big as it ever yeah, did. Yeah, that's true. Unfortunately. Who wants to drink cough syrup, though? That's so weird. It's, like, not, it's not that they want to drink cough syrup. They want to get high. <laughs> like, that's a weird type of high. I don't know. I've never done it, so well, I can't I can't, either, but I can't if say. you think about what that is, I mean, like, fucking cough syrup. Yeah. That's, that's I mean, I think I'll just fall asleep. And they put, like, a Jolly Rancher? I don't know. Dude, you're don't asking know. the wrong yeah. person. I don't <laughs> fucking know. Uh, love and Hip Hop watch that or something. I don't know. I've never seen that show, so, oh, my gosh. I don't, I don't know if they actually do that. Jocelyn's gonna hit me. There you go. Is that somebody on that show? I don't know. Why are we talking about things we don't know anything about? I don't know. Again, we're old. But yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the We're Old podcast, <laughs> the Boomer Cast. But I don't know. Quarantine. Um, it's it's been all in all, it has been, I think, a great experience for me personally. Yeah. Um, I was just like. So like living in Austin and having um, a nine to five job. So I go into work uh, at seven o'clock in the morning. I get there at 630 just because mm-hmm. I don't I don't drive. I take the bus uh, just because Austin traffic is just like so horrible. And I'd rather just be able to chill. Um, I don't I get road rage. So, yeah, my days 
<laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, my days start so early. Um, and then I wouldn't get home until like almost six sometimes, 5.30. And like, I just, I couldn't take it. And like, and then I started going to school and I had no time in my gym time. Like, I love to go to the gym. I used to go to the gym six days a week. And it's not because, oh, I have to. It's something I have to do because that's like, I love it. I do it because I love it and I enjoy it and it brings happiness and it's a stress reliever and mm -hmm. there is the aesthetic portion of it. I do like to just general, generally look good, but it did so much more for me. But it was too much and I had to, I had to sacrifice something in my life and I had to let that go. So then I was only going, started going one day out of the week and then Friday, Saturday and Sunday mm -hmm. and I just kept going less and less. And then when this quarantine hit, um, we're going to the gym a lot and then like a week later, they closed. I'm like, oh my God, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And you were like out there hitting like PRs right before this all happened. Mm -hmm. so. Yes. so I've I, I've switched gears a lot. So I started out just bodybuilding. Um, I just wanted to get ripped and shredded. Da, 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 da. And I did. I, I think I hit that, but I, I never... Um, like I wanted to get to a point where I can hit the stage and compete. I felt like I wasn't quite there. Mm -hmm. Looking back on pictures, I think I might have actually been. Uh, so that's the sad part, and it's like a whole bunch of like body dysmorphia. Yeah, you never you never see it when you're yeah. there. But um, when you get out of it, it's like, whoa, yeah. I look like that. That's that's where I'm at now. When we were editing the mm -hmm. intro video and stuff like that, and I'm looking at myself like flexing in those pictures, I'm like, damn. gigantic. Like what the fucking happened? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the quarantine uh, 19. Or no, the COVID-19. I was like, quarantine what? <laughs> no, no, there that is one, the quarantine 15. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I heard yeah. that one. Yeah, but, and then I switched gears from bodybuilding to weightlifting, and then I switched gears from weightlifting to powerlifting, and yeah, my PRs got ridiculous. So my, um, well, okay, so my deadlift was 295. So close. And I was like, the next week I'm gonna hit 300. And I've been wanting to get Converse, but I'm so fucking frugal. So it took me like a year to finally cave in and get Converse. And I only got them because they were on sale. <laughs> and yep. they happened to have my size and they were cute. And I was very specific about it. I was like, they had to be black on black. But um, finally got my Converse. I put them on, I hit the gym floor. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna get my 300s. I'm gonna get my 300. And I was so eager that instead of doing like my like my 10 pound increment, five pound increment um, sets. Warm I was, up. yeah, I jumped like all the way up to 225 after starting like my 155 warm up, And then like I did like two sets in between and I'm like, okay. Let's go. Let's hit yep. 300. Yeah. And we don't have lift off. <laughs> no, we can't. <laughs> nope. Yeah, but I really wanted that 300. And then the next day the gym's closed. And then I got fat. <laughs> no, you didn't. No, I you so didn't. did. We both so okay. Did. We we both put on a little weight. Sure, a lot, man. But it's okay. It's okay. We like that's the thing about mm. like like um, like fat and like gaining weight and stuff like that and or losing your muscle. All of it is malleable. All mm -hmm. of it. Every, everything I just listed is malleable. You can change that. You can, three months down the line, you can switch up your, your diet. You can switch up your exercise and fix it. Turn mm -hmm. turn right back around. Get back, get back on the horse. Go back the other way. I've done it a million times in my life. There's so, there's so many times in my life where I've gained, like I've lost 30 pounds, gained mm -hmm. 20 pounds. Lost 40 pounds, gained 25 pounds. You're also a man. Yeah, true. But I think, but I think that's like, and as like true, as you get older, that gets harder and harder, mm -hmm. but harder doesn't mean impossible. That's true. That's very true. And I've been, I um, I think when I came to Austin, I was the physique I am now. Mm -hmm. And within like five months, I got to my peak. So yeah. it's doable. But when you sit here in this moment, in this time, and in this body. Yep. Like, no, I get it. It's not possible. I get it. I, I, I sat in that mentality for 22 years. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> I was sitting, I was like, it, it took me hitting 300 pounds to be like, mm. fuck that. I need to, I need to stop. Yeah. We need, we need to do something different. Like it took, it took something drastic for me to change that. And you, cause you didn't start going to the gym immediately, right? You were working out from home mm -hmm. originally. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, those dumbbells I have out there, I bought 
mm-hmm. to work out at home so that I didn't have to go to the gym. Mm-hmm. What What's the point? Because I, I know, like, I don't know if you, like, want to really, like, talk about it specifically, like, why you did that. But, like, what's the point where you were like, okay, time for me to go into a commercial gym. Like, I feel like, what was the turning point? Hmm. I don't really know if I can pin down the turning point like what just what made me go okay I need to get there I think it was just that I was like progressing past my dumbbells yeah you know what I mean I think it's mm-hmm. all it was I was I was getting to the point where like I was like the the deadlifts that I was doing with like I was using the 50 pound dumbbells and like I wasn't really like tiring out by the end of my like even like my mm-hmm. AMRAP sets it was like I was, I was you know repping them out so I, th- I think it's that that's probably all it was was just me needing more I needed more equipment and more stuff like that and just kind of mm-hmm needed to push myself out of that comfort zone. I yeah. don't know I don't know if it was like a I look good now, let's go. I was like yeah. I'm I past st- this point. Yeah, it's still like in my mind I'm not mm-hmm. at that like I look good. I should be in the gym to show off how good I look. You know what I mean? Like I've, I've never really that's, hit that. That's good though. Mentality. I hope you never do. Yeah. Cuz that might annoy me. <laughs> Even though I do that, I do the exact thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go out there and just in a sports bra, like, oh, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly it's me look, saying, hey, Quila, look at Quila, <laughs> to yeah. be honest. I mean, it just, when you when you look good, you feel good. And mm-hmm. it's, I'm not going to bullshit and say I don't do it for vanity. Yeah. Part of it, I do it for vanity. Most of it is my um, to keep up with a healthy mental state. Yeah. That's most of it. That, that's what it became for me eventually. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I'd say after like eight or nine months of just working out and like, finally going to the gym for a few months and whatnot I kind of got to the point where like I noticed that if I didn't go to the gym I was just more sad yeah you know I was just like in a worse mood like my my overall mental state was worse Mm -hmm. than it was if I did go to the gym so that that's when it became a necessity for me not necessarily like so how was the transition for you um like going to the gym like because you do like a lot of freelance work and stuff and working from home originally like all mm-hmm. of us are now having to do now and adapt yeah so, welcome to my world yeah. baby <laughs> exactly <laughs> uh, but yeah you you had the opportunity to go to the gym when you wanted when it was empty and then boom there's no gym you don't have that sanctuary anymore what was that like adjustment period for you um I don't know if it was as tough this time around because I've got other like ways to cope with things mm-hmm. like my lovely girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't necessarily need to like you know mm-hmm. like back myself into the gym when I feel that way anymore. Um, so I, I don't think it was so hard um, this time, specifically especially because I have lots of equipment. Like I've got my own yeah. equipment. I've got you know dumbbells and resistance bands and stuff like that. So like. The transition to doing this on my like mental state, I don't think really had that much of a toll. That's good. To be totally yeah. honest. How about you? Um, it's weird. So at first, because I, I was already go, I was already uh, taking away my days in the gym, mm-hmm. and it was at that point that I really started to get heavy into powerlifting. So more than anything, I was pissed because my PRs, like I knew right away they'd be out the door. Mm-hmm. After, of course, like. Because, like, uh, Tyler, your roommate, he was, like, talking and saying, like, no, the gyms are going to be closed for a while. I'm like, they're, first I was like, they're not going to close. They're not going to close. How are they going to close the why gyms? Would, why would the gyms close? Like, <laughs> But if you think about it, they are probably the cleanest places. You, so, like, some might say it's dirty, but no, they really are the cleanest places. Oh, I'm a that. germaphobe, <laughs> and I put my face on the gym floor. That, that's because you're in the mode. You're not, like... If you if you sat if you watched somebody like drip sweat on that floor like ten seconds before you went over there you'd think twice about putting your face on that oh, fucking ground yeah right mm-hmm. and realistically in the past two hours someone's was dripping fucking sweat on that spot on the ground evaporated. that's all I'm saying it evaporated <laughs> that's all I'm saying it's just salt <laughs> <laughs> you need sodium in your diet I was looking at hey <laughs> however you want to get it I'm not saying it's a bad thing. <laughs> Um, but <laughs> yeah, more than, more than anything, I was pissed because I knew my yeah. PRs would be out the window. Um, and then, um, I think because like, I don't live here. I live by myself with my cat. That, that was the hardest thing because when we, 
when we realize like okay you have the equipment and we'll all just work out together you me tyler anthony Mm -hmm. and then they did that like that whole thing like quarantine where you can't go out and i was freaking out like i was i was on the verge of tears i was like i can't hang out with you guys i can't work out with you guys like y'all were my my workout group Mm -hmm. so that was really actually sad um i never actually really talked to you about that that much i know you see you Um, see on my face definitely tell yeah but that was that was really very depressing for me um and then i got into this mode where i was like you know what i was gonna call this a bulking period and i started eating a lot and a lot and i ate all those costco pretzels um and then i realized i wasn't the way <laughs> um, this is the way this is the way by the way <laughs> i can't even consume way because I'm True. lactose intolerant. The True. last time I did, I broke out an inflamed acne. Maybe if we're, I'm brave, I'll allow you to post a before and after picture. But by the way, by the way is yeah. that is that lactose intolerance or is that something else that makes that happen? It's lactose intolerance. Because um, lactose intolerance is more of a digestive thing. Where I, th- I think because because if sugar if you eat sugar, you you break out that way, and it might mm-hmm. just be the lactose. Um, you break out so that. lactose intolerance doesn't all just have to mean your digestion, just your body in general is intolerant to it. So okay. I just, I, my body freaks out in every w- which way possible. Right. It's kind of like somebody who has allergies like me. Sure. Um, it's like uh, you get that, that response, that autoimmune response. I think that's what you call it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then your body reacts by like having itchy eyes and snot coming out of your nose and sneezing same thing yeah. so i consume lactose and my stomach does hurt i get the shits um but, but i'm, I'm saying because lactose is sugar and when you eat sugar mm-hmm. you eat things of anything else you also break out so it might just be the sugar it's definitely the lactose yeah yeah that's mm-hmm. sugar <laughs> no <laughs> it's lactose <laughs> Okay, that's what the toast means in lactose. It's sugar. Like sucrose? Yeah, and, and fructose. And dextrose. It's all sugar. Shit, I didn't realize that. <laughs> oh, it's all the oses. Yeah, so See, I think, I think, yeah, I think, yeah, I think the lactose intolerance is your stomach uh-huh. dealing with it. And your, the lactose in your face is getting the... Yeah. Getting that. But then again, I mean, I just, I can't consume anything. Like, I can't mm-hmm. eat processed foods at all or else I throw up. Um, my hair falls out, my hair gets brittle, I, my skin breaks out. Yeah. I actually start smelling. Um, that's really weird. Like, my, I get, like, B.O. Like, I can't consume anything besides, like, organic shit. And it's really annoying. It's a blessing in, in disguise, probably. I wonder if it's because I'm getting older. Um, I was listening to, I was listening to someone else's podcast. And she was talking about how you... Your body wants to have a baby when you're like around my age on the brink of 30. It's like, okay, you're you're getting like to that geriatric point. Mm. Like you need to push out that baby. You need to get that baby. Yeah. And when you're not, your body is like freaking out. I think maybe that's what's happening to me. Yeah. I mean, I think I think that's like evolutionarily mm. a thing. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, quarantine, but it's it's taught me a lot of good things cuz I had a lot of issues um with my body in general so i had the digestive issues i had that pinch um in my right hip Mm -hmm. um and then i was having a little bit of lower back pain and i had a butt wink and just like a lot of things that were going on with my body and like my left shoulder was hurting and Mm -hmm. like in um between my shoulder blades on my back like but my um, most most of which is probably just Honestly, a deterioration of your body from lifting so exactly. much for so long. Exactly, exactly. And um, I needed, I feel like I kind of needed to have this time off. And so, like, I've been getting into a lot of different things. Um, a lot of things that I've wanted to do, but I felt like I didn't have time to incorporate that into my already hectic schedule. Because, mm-hmm. like, after, because my gym sessions were really long. Um, like there was like an hour and a half. If you weren't coming with me and I knew I was like, like I'm getting on his nerves because I'm taking too long, it would probably be two hours. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can't do that plus like extensive stretching. So I would literally forego stretching. And I know you're not supposed to do that. I know, I know. You can tell me until you're blue in the face. I know you're not supposed to do that. And I can't say with complete certainty that that won't just start up again when gyms reopen. I hope it doesn't. I don't but, think it. I think you're much more aware of how that yeah. affects you. I mean, like, look at you. Now, like, you don't have any of those pains. Your butt, I know. your butt wink has almost completely gone away. Like, 
It's just. I'm curious to test it under weight. some weight. Yeah, same. Mm-hmm. I want to get under a bar and see if it's the same. Mm-hmm. I said that like Jeff Nipper. I said bar. Bar. <laughs> I need to get under the bar. The bar. <laughs> But um, gonna go, go get a cola. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, it's a soda pop. I gotta get a soda pop. Get my arms under the bar <laughs> and get my back. No, the back's just normal. <laughs> back, get my back, back. And my, my arms under my the bar. Back. <laughs> you gotta swallow all your words. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, like vinyasa flow yoga has been my shit. And trying to get the splits, which I now have. I now mm-hmm. have my, I think they're called side splits. I think that's a big part of the reason for the pain going mm-hmm. away in your, in your hip areas. Is I you're had just, tight hips. You're just more flexible. Which just explains why I had the butt wink. So mm-hmm. I had a butt wink and I had a hip impingement because I had tight hip flexors. I have overactive quads. Psoas. And mm-hmm, my psoas, overactive quads, and I have underactive glutes and yep. hamstrings. Mm-hmm. Also my calves. I need to work my calves. But in my defense, black people have issues with their calves. So I'm always going to use that as an excuse. No, no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. no. L- listen, they don't, they listen, don't, Linda. You don't have Look, issues. Listen, Linda. You don't have issues with your calves. <laughs> Just don't grow calves. What's you, the you difference? still have the same strength. No. <laughs> yes. If, it, if I worked out my calves every second of every day and I went up against Arnold Schwarzenegger at his prime, his damn calves would be way better than mine he could lift like a billion times more yes because it's arnold schwarzenegger isn't ronnie coleman black yeah okay you want to look up his calves but okay but if you take their like <laughs> strength i'm pretty sure they work their calves the same amount because they're bodybuilders yeah, so they have I, to have I, the I would entire guarantee physique. they probably have this like of some similar yes implants i'm just kidding i like <laughs> ronnie coleman <laughs> but hold on i'm fucking looking this up I want to see. Let's see. Ronnie Coleman calves. He's half white. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a black fella. <laughs> Look at that shit. Don't tell me. <laughs> that is something else, though. That's, that's, uh, I'm not going to throw, I'm going to throw some shade, but that's something <laughs> else. I don't know. That's some striation. Striation on them glutes. Yeah. That's crazy. No. Okay, so, I want to know. Can a, do you think a black? You're, you're asking me all kinds of things about black people, and I'm like, <laughs> you're gonna dig me into a hole over here. Let's rewind. Let's reverse. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> white people. <laughs> kidding. No. Oh, no. What were you, you can ask your question. What were you saying? I don't know. <laughs> but. Uh, vinyasa just... flow and working out my psoas and things like that mm-hmm. i still need the thing is i thought that i was more hamstring dominant than i was quad dominant like i could have sworn i was uh-huh. like just looking like aesthetically mm-hmm. um but if you think about it i squat what was my squat my squat wasn't that great it was you have to look at your phone i i squatted 225 right i don't remember Let's it's see. Been, it's been months at this point. I should really remember these things. Last edit of this was March the 14th. That's so sad. Wow. My back squat, and I was and I was doing, because I had just switched to, to yep, I had just switched to low bar, and so that was 215. Okay. I've hit 225 before, but I'm always just, like, I've always had to work out by myself, so I never had a spotter, which I know is an excuse. You can just ask somebody or use the safeties, but mm-hmm. I really, I do better with it's the a spotter. It, it, it's a mental thing. I, mm-hmm. I get that. I, I totally get yeah. that. I, I've always lifted more, like, on, specifically on the bench. Mm-hmm. I've always lifted more if I have somebody there to spot. Yeah. Always. Oh, yeah, my deadlift is definitely the best out of my three lifts. And yeah. I don't count overhead squats. I'm not going to say four. Or overhead uh, press. So yeah. I'm not going to say four, but yeah, my deadlift's definitely the best. Yours is bench. Yeah. By far. I just can't, I don't know. It, I understand that my bench is pretty high for where I'm at. Your bench is crazy high for your size. <laughs> I mean, I'm class. a pretty small person. Yeah. Like. yeah. <laughs> but I think I where, I where I'm at in like my fitness journey, I feel like I should be at least like 50 pounds higher than what you I'm should, at. Fuck, get should out of your out of your vocabulary. You're just right. just fuck off. Should fuck right off. 
<laughs> no, you're right. You're right. Actually, yeah. like it doesn't matter what you should do. It, like what matters is what you were doing a week ago, or two weeks ago, or a couple months ago, or yesterday. That's Compare all that yourself matters. to yourself, and not that's others. all that matters. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, or, you're not or, any better. Or if you're comparing, if you're always comparing yourself to like the image you have of yourself in your mind, mm-hmm. of like where you think you're supposed to be right now, like then you're always gonna be disappointed. Yeah, hundred percent. You're right. I need to just remember that. Yeah. I forget a lot. Yeah, mm. it's important. Mm-hmm. Uh, yoga, I recommend yoga to everybody. I've done, a, I've done a few videos since um, since you started doing them. I've done one or two myself just to mm-hmm. like loosen up. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes I feel like I need it. Yeah, I wish I could get the mental part, like the mental um, like benefits out of it, but I can't at the moment, mostly because it just hurts. Like that's mm. that's some deep stretching that I'm doing, um, but. Yeah, I have felt more zen just in general, yeah. like negligible the, the yoga. Um, yeah, and I've just like been enjoying more and different things. Unfortunately, it's getting hotter, so I can't take walks anymore. Like I would go on a walk during lunch every day, and it, that cleared my head definitely. And it was great cardio. I mean, going for like a 45 uh, to 60 minute walk. Yeah. Um, you know, I hate cardio. I don't do cardio. Quicker don't run. I I have to. Mm-hmm. I don't have a choice. Yeah. I'm at the gym. Yeah. I've been foregoing it during quarantine, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> More often than not. Well, I, I tell you, like, we need to go on runs. I know. Yeah. You know, run. Ugh. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> it's <laughs> the things that you don't want to do that are usually the things that you need to do. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. I really don't want to do math either, so... <laughs> Okay, I mean, I don't think that's comparable. <laughs> hey, you can't just be throwing things out. You know, you should be more specific then. <laughs> don't be specific. Don't be specific. <laughs> that's not it. Renegade. Close enough. Renegade. That's <laughs> <laughs> gonna be better for everything now. Oh, shit. You're gonna get on the ticky tack. But, like, you have to do this every time. <laughs> Renegade. Renegade. <laughs> Well, we're on the skating. We went to the skating rink. Oh, my God. This was so... This was, like, the moment that I was like, I'm fucking old. <laughs> went to the skating rink. And um, <laughs> we're just... We're just... This couple is skating around, minding our own business. They're playing a whole bunch of music that I have no idea what it is. I'm just waiting for them to play some Destiny's Child or something. I, I recognize this music only because of TikTok. Oh, yeah. Literally the only You're reason. on the Tiki Tacky more yeah, than me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but... And then... Like the song comes on and you're you're saying to yourself or you're saying to me like they're about to watch all these girls are doing this dance and it's like I'm in like the fucking twilight zone like they're all like in the synchronized I'm like what is going on as soon as, soon as the song because y'all know how that song starts it's just the like, like that dark that like hot heavy bass and renegade and I, I turned to her I was like watch was like, just watch these kids like, what are they doing it's so weird. <laughs> and the way that they're dressing, put on some clothes. <laughs> like everybody got the booty cheeks out. I mean, like, that's what that's what we did too. No, I didn't. Actually, I I didn't. I really okay. didn't. Okay, that's that's respectable. But yeah. you can't say that the girls weren't. <laughs> oh, that's true. They had their boobies out. Yeah, people have been doing that that shit since like the sixties and seventies. She does probably not, earlier. She let me touch her boobies, and I like them too. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but yeah, I can't get with these young people. But I mean, that you know how they talk about like the millennial culture. Because I mean, I was born in ninety one. Mm-hmm. I definitely have some millennial tendencies. Millennial, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I just drank a kombucha while we were watching Jojo True. Rabbit. Is, is that a millennial thing? What are what's millennial? You know, uh, they all make fun of us for. Well, I mean, avocado toast is the one that I hear a lot. I eat avocado you toast eat every, every day. day. <laughs> every day. I eat three pieces of avocado toast on sprouted whole wheat or sprouted bread. Mm-hmm. But with, you buy from a special section. Yes, I get you. the frozen <laughs> because sugar fucks with my face, okay? Hey. <laughs> so I have to I have to eat it. And then I got I get my tomatoes and then I get my ghee. I can't eat butter. <laughs> So I have my ghee, and then I put my garlic in it, and then red pepper flakes, and then I take some shrimp, 
put it in there and then I cut up I dice up a little tomato Roma tomato and then I put some Italian seasoning and I cook it all up in the ghee and then I get that's, my avocado that's much more than avocado toast I feel like I, it's quila avocado toast it's avocado toast plus but it's delicious Qu- quilicato toast quilicato quilicato toast I like, I like quilicato <laughs> I like quilicato because avocado has a have a avocado quilicato I like my quilicato what do you call it I don't know. <laughs> I already forgot. <laughs> I like my avocado. <laughs> but avocado toast is the shit. Ghee is eh. the shit. I like my eight my brags. See, no one ever knows what I'm talking about when I mention um, millennial. Oops, oops. Stereotypes. Okay, let's find a list, and then we're gonna go through them. And this is all we're gonna do. We're gonna keep a scorecard. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So. That doesn't work. Quila here. Jimmy here. And we're gonna find the stereotypes and we're gonna keep track. And we're gonna see who wins. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be me. And plus I've been- But but like- it should be you because you were born later, right? So you were born in 93. I was I'm, born in I'm, 91. So you're, you're more of a millennial than I'm I am. I'm more millennial? Yeah. Oh, because I was at my, I was older yeah. when it hit. Yeah. So I, yeah. Okay. I'm closer to a Gen, Gen, Z, Gen Z or whatever. I don't know. They don't exist to me. If you were, uh, if you were born after 2000, then you will forever be a 10 year old in my head. This doesn't give me anything about millennial stereotypes. Let's try this. <sighs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's check out Reddit. All right. Let's see what these guys say. They don't like working? Okay. So that's one for me. <laughs> okay. But that's my job, though. That has it with my job. What? Like, you don't like in working? accounting. Like, I don't want to do that. It's boring. And I am one of those people where I want to fulfill my life's like ba- like basic needs, but also be happy and live in like this fluffy little thing in my mind or whatever. So does that apply to you? I would say no. No. I, I enjoy. But you have uh, a kick-ass edit- job. And stuff like that. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, so that's just one for Quila. <laughs> Next. Um. Have a hard time finding work? Mm, no, not really. Oh, hate talking on the phone. That's yep. a big one for me. I yep. hate talking on the phone. If you call me, I don't care who you are. I mean, if it's the only person I will answer my phone for literally is you. Anyone else, I will not answer it. I will hit that red. I'll put you on red. And you need to text me. <laughs> I may or may not text you back. I The worst is people who leave a voicemail, but like... Nothing pertinent in the all the information that they give me in the voicemail I can get just from my phone. Yeah. I'm looking at my phone like when you called me. It's <laughs> like my uncle will call me and be like, Hey, it's Uncle Lou. Uh call me back. It's like two thirty. Bye. Brother, I can get all of that information <laughs> from my missed call list. You do not need to leave me a <laughs> you do not need to leave me a I voicemail. Get that. I get that. <laughs> but my thing is okay, so it's like it's it's like 80 20 for me 80 percent don't don't fucking call me text me 20 mm-hmm. percent call me i do it with you a lot like if you if i'm about to leave and or i need you to get me some type of food and it's like this whole conundrum like what should i get you pick up the goddamn phone pick up the phone yeah this is a conversation like i'm not gonna text you a million things or like if we're making plans that are gonna happen like something for, that's happening soon sure call me some people just don't understand that like I'm not going to keep texting you over and over again. And I'm usually busy. So my phone, I'll get behind like on your text, but you understand. You'll text me and I won't text back for like three hours. I'm so sorry, but. I don't. I'm doing shit here too. (laughs) But some people don't understand that. Everybody has this mentality that they're the most important person on the planet. Mm -hmm. And if you're not going to text me back right now, right here you are ignoring me which is you funny. have you have beef with me the next one on the list is that we're entitled <laughs> <laughs> i 
<laughs> I don't think I'm entitled. I don't have that um, no. mentality. I think that's the way I grew up. Yeah. I definitely don't think I'm entitled. I don't... I, I would like to say that I'm not entitled, but I definitely feel... Like if I if That's I was one for you if I if I was legitimately thinking about it I think yeah I think I think I would be a little entitled in specific ways like mm-hmm. when I see a movie or something like that or like a short mm-hmm. that is like poorly lit or poorly directed and or some like poorly shot and stuff like that mm-hmm. I I I, end, I tend to think I could have done this better I could have done I could have done this and this and like and like kind of work out in my mind how I would have been better than yeah. this person you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. so I I, I I would say I'm probably entitled in that way. Mm-hmm. But not so much like you think, like, um, you should have um, a kick-ass editing job for Warner Brothers because you worked for it, you went to school, so give me that job. Yeah. Not so much that. Yeah, I guess that's true. I guess I'm not entitled. What's what's the word I'm looking for, maybe? Um, I, you're not pretentious, but it's kind of like a pretentious thing if you're yeah. watching something yeah. and yeah. you're saying, like, no, oh, they could have done that better. I can, no. I, can, I can see it. Like, if we're looking at somebody lifting, which we kind of do sometimes, and we're like... We did it today. Yeah, we did. (laughs) (laughs) We did that like three hours ago. (laughs) Totally did. We were watching. What are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? (laughs) We were watching a video of me deadlifting, and the guy in the back was like doing these like half ass deadlifts where he was like coming up to like 45 degrees. It was like. He was like doing this shit. It was like he was trying to combine a conventional deadlift with an RDL. I don't know what the hell he was doing. But I, his I, back of, was all rounded. Yeah, part of me wants to pull up the video, but I also don't want to. No, don't do that. That's me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll blur his face, and then we'll pull it up next week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's the next one? Um, let's see. Quarter life oh, they crisis. Have, they have, they'll have a quarter life crisis? I'd definitely say that's probably yeah, true. I had a quarter for life sure. crisis. I quit many, my job. When many I was of them will opt to never have children. Yeah, I've already kind of. It's it's not solidified in yeah. my head, but basically, I I'm pretty sure. That's kind of where I stand on it, honestly. I'm like we haven't obviously had this conversation <laughs> at all yeah. yet, but like if I'm like you know. 45 and comfortable and like you know whatever i think mm-hmm. at that point in my life maybe i would adopt exactly i think that would be a better option for me and like mm-hmm. you know the type of person that i am um yeah i think i think that's probably more the route that i would go i don't i don't think i don't think it's a good thing or even responsible to have a baby in your mid to late 20s when you can't afford it mm-hmm. and I, have, <laughs> I have like so many reasons um like I don't want to have a baby right now because of financial reasons. Mm-hmm. One, two, there's just like so much shit wrong with my genes. Like, um, so how I can't like eat anything, or I suffer from acne, and there's like diabetes in my family. But there's also like mental things in my family that I don't want to carry <clears throat> carry on with my genes. So that's number two. Three. I don't agree with where the world is going and based on where we are at now. And I don't want to contribute to the problem. There's like so much overpopulation. I I hate to say it, but I I always think that things happen for a reason outside of like any type of religious, um, Mm. religious reasoning. I think things happen for a reason. And I think that this virus came because the world needs to correct itself. Yeah. I mean, it's hard, it's hard to say it in that way, but like there's definitely evidence for like, natural um balance so like Mm -hmm. if you uh, there was a study that was done back in the 90s or 90s where they studied they like kept an eye on like deer population in a certain area and they didn't let hunters go and like hunt for the deer Mm -hmm. they didn't let it they didn't do any kind of um what's the word i'm looking for Anyway, they didn't they didn't let hunters go and kill deer that year. There's and no they, manipulation from the human right, population. Right. So they, they were just like kind of testing things. Mm-hmm. And what happened in the in that ecosystem is like the deer population just went up and up and up and up and up and up and up. Mm-hmm. And eventually it plateaued and shot straight back down. They died of diseases, they died of uh, they were like there there was some deer that were supposedly eating each other. It was like chaos in like wow. this little ecosystem. And like it, it's interesting to like kind of think about it in that way, where mm-hmm. like that that could just be what this was. You know what I mean? It's it's sad that it doesn't happen in the opposite way to compensate for humans just being complete pieces of shit. 
So like bees, bees are in <clears throat> in grave danger of going extinct. Yeah. And they can't help themselves. Too many? Okay, we're just going to kill off a few. Not enough? You just suffer and die. Yeah. I don't know, that's kind of sad. But yeah, that's one for both of us. Mm, let's let's see. Two more. We fucking love to brunch. Oh, I saw one I complained about the cost of living. Oh my <laughs> god! Okay, that's definitely me. I don't know. You don't really do that. Uh, I've never I mean, I, 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 there's no sense in complaining about it because there's nothing mm. we can do about it. Okay, first of all, we live in Austin. Yes, yes. Austin is so fucking expensive. Okay, I'm from San Antonio. You can get a studio apartment. I mean, mind you, it's going to be on, uh, like on the east side. But you can easily get like a studio apartment for like $400, $300 maybe. Mm-hmm. It's been a couple of years since I've been there, so it's my, it might probably, have gone Probably up. up a little bit. But I had a nice one-bedroom apartment for, I think it was $550. Mm-hmm. My apartment now, okay, so I pay, it went up, but when I moved into it, it was six. It was 686 which is, and every time I tell somebody that, they're like, what the hell? That's cheap. Yes, <laughs> yes. But it's smaller than my place was in San Antonio, and it costs a hundred dollars more. And now yeah. it's shot up even more. So I'm yeah. paying like it's just ridiculous. If you want, and I, like I don't live in the ghetto, <laughs> but um, like I don't live in like luxury. But if you want to live in like a decent place, like if you want to live up in tech, by Tech Ridge, mm-hmm. or if you want to live at the oh my god the domain downtown, like something like that. If you just want to, or if you just want to live moderately, quiet neighborhood, something like that. You want a one bedroom apartment that's, I don't know, fucking 700 square feet. You're going to be paying $1,400 a month for that thing. Yeah. And I think that's just ridiculous. And I can't get with it. I cannot get with Austin. Like, I just, I'm so sorry, but I do not like this city. Why are you saying sorry to me? I'm, I am so sorry. <laughs> I do not like Austin. Austin, Texas is a great place to see music. I've seen Floor. I got to talk to Lost Boy Crow. Oh my God, if Lost Boy Crow ever watched this. But um, <laughs> that's my boy. That's my boy. Um, but like the music scene is great because we both love music. So I like incorporating that. Mm-hmm. But I just do not like this city. I, I am in misery every time I have to get into my car and get on the road. I am in agony. Yeah. Speaking of roads, I'm curious what other people, like, I want to know if my assumption about Texans is right, because I have never heard us say that. He was getting on the highway yesterday when we were going to the academy, or he was talking about it, and he was like, should I get on the interstate? Oh. I'm like, why are you calling it the interstate? It's the fucking highway. And it was like a little back and we, forth. We had a whole thing. Yeah, and I was like, people I, in Texas don't call that, don't call it an interstate. It like, literally says I-35. What do you think I stand for? I know it's Interstate 35. (laughs) Interstate Highway. It's it. Interstate Highway. It is. So Highway, we just shorten it. Y'all are making things too long. It's easier to say Highway. No, because because 35. That's not Interstate Highway. Two syllables. Listen listen to me, Linda. Listen to me, Linda. Listen to me, Linda. I'm gonna stop this fucking podcast right now. (laughs) There's um, a road. There's a highway that does run into 35, and they are the same road for a little while, and then it splits off, and then it's just the interstate. No one calls it that. <laughs> See, you guys worry about all this technicalities. Us here in Texas, we're just Dumb. chilling. Hey! <laughs> hey! Texans are not dumb. I'm not dumb. I have a 4.0 GPA. <laughs> GPA. Oh, yeah! <laughs> she had a 4.0 GPA. <laughs> no. No. But anyway, that's weird. All right, let's do one more. <laughs> Uh, anything they wanted. Yeah. Mm, can I already talk about I it? hate myself? Yeah. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and and it's so sad. I feel like in every way possible. Like, I hate, like, the thoughts that I have. I hate the thing that I've been working on a lot is my... Like I don't necessarily stereotype people, but I always I always think about the worst in people. Or I'm trying to switch from noticing just ugh, 
things about people and finding something good to notice about them. Mm -hmm. Like if you're, if we're sitting behind somebody, like when we're at Deccan and there was like that lady, that old lady, she was like leaning over and like her ass was out and her tits were out. And I was like, ew. But instead of saying that to myself, why can't I say, look at that lady with confidence. That's great. I wish I had confidence like that. Like yeah. I'm really trying to switch. Like that's that's the the thing I hate most about myself is that I'm always thinking like so negatively. It's not necessarily explicit. I'm not. Sometimes I do, obviously, like everybody else. But a lot of time it's just me saying something to myself in my head. Or like I'll turn the corner in the grocery store and there will be a man with a cart. And it's just it's our like our first instinct to be like, why the fuck are you in my way? Move. And that person can will shock you and smile. And you're like, why did you think that? Look at them. You just feel like shit afterward because they just smiled at you. And then you smile back and you realize, God, I was an ass. I want to be that person that turns the corner and smiles and shocks someone. I want to stop being that person that gets shocked. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just yeah. want to be better in that aspect. I want to be, I don't want to say that I'm a nice person, because when you have to say that you're a nice person, you're not a nice person. You're validating something. Yeah. I want to just be a nice person. I want to be better. So um, that's good, though. I mean, it's. I think it's good and like uh, admirable that you like recognize that kind of stuff in you. I think most people that have that kind of mentality don't even recognize that they think that way. So sadly, yeah, people are just okay <laughs> with being assholes in general. Yeah, I mean, they're they're the only person that lives in their world. So. Mm -hmm. Love yourself, treat yourself, do good. And smile at people. Yes. We can't really do that now because we're all wearing masks. Smile with your eyes. <laughs> Just Tyra Banks. Get your eyes well wide at them. Have a good day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you buy a mask like mine with um with a nice pretty picture. I'm gonna buy it. one that has a smile on it. Dude, Just that's like, a good like, idea. Like Joker. I didn't see any of those on Etsy. No. Maybe not Joker. But. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen. I saw one. I saw a post on Reddit that was like uh, somebody was making co uh, face covers that had a, oh, like, a, little, like yeah. a little plastic piece in front of it. So okay. it was made. It was for people who were hard of hearing, mm -hmm. so they could read lips. But I, I want one just so I can smile at people. Yeah. Like I feel. I feel like these. It's so difficult. These masks have taken away like my ability to like mm -hmm. be friendly in, in public. If you think about it, maybe that's a good thing because maybe a smile isn't enough for someone. Maybe that makes you think of ways that you can that are out of the norm that you can go out of the way to make someone's day. Mm -hmm. Like that lady at the grocery store today that needed help finding the strawberry icing. That mm -hmm. was so kind of you. Yeah. It's only because you're a million feet tall. Yep. And I uh, tried to help with my 5'3 ass. I was like, is there any strawberry? <laughs> <laughs> she was like, oh, this poor girl. <laughs> she's, she's, like, she's like, I need to use your tall people powers. <laughs> I totally get that. I climb shelves. <laughs> I really do. You know why I can't go to the grocery store without you? Because I can't open those <laughs> produce bags. <laughs> Why are they so hard to open? They're not. They're and not. It doesn't make sense. I'm naturally greasier than you. I think that's why you can't do it. But th that should create like 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 if it's greasy. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's like it's just lube. You yeah. can't like can't, can't grip anything. Yeah. Oh, I gotcha. You need my white people powers. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sprung some crack on it. That's that's what it looked like you were doing. <laughs> They should do. Oh, I never saw. We're at an hour. We should probably wrap this up soon. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what were you gonna say? Finish your thought. I was just saying. Oh, no one steal it. What if they made well, it? Well, don't say it. Oh, I gotta say it. You know, like the salt <laughs> bathe guy that did that. Uh -huh. What if like they um they you put Dave Chappelle there like over like a ribeye and it's like sprinkle some crack on it. <laughs> <laughs> and then sure that's then, already a meme and then you get emerald in there bam and then <laughs> Dave Chappelle gets sprinkles crack on bam sprinkles crack on <laughs> we extended the podcast for that okay <laughs> thanks everybody with that we are out this is the way but this is this is the way this has been this is the way 
We are. Oh, we can at the end of the podcast we can say this has been the way. This has been the way. Bye. Hasta luego.